Welcome to Irish Horse TV. My name is Dara Crahur. I'm here today with Tamara Stoyle, uh, known to all and sundry within racing and outside it as Tamzo. And Tamzo is moving on to pastures new after 11 years as communications guru with Horse Racing Ireland. Welcome, Tamzo. Thanks, Dara. Thanks for having me. Um, I was just thinking earlier <laughs> that, that when we were discussing this, that the first time we met would have been early 2003. I would have just started my job in Kildare, the Kildare National at the end of 2002. You weren't long working at that stage within HRI. Um, a lot has changed in those days since those days. Yeah, it's been 11 years now with Horse Racing Ireland, which has been wonderful. I've had some great years there. Um, in 2001, when it was set up, literally my, um, myself and my colleague Michael, and we were all brought on in, from that period in early 2002. So I started in April, and it literally was hit the ground running. The Punchestown Festival was three weeks later, so it was just all systems go. No betting in at all. No, no time for that, yeah. I mean, we, we'll talk a lot about that later, but I, I'm very interested in what brought you to that point. I mean, uh, you've a lot done in a short period of time and you already had by that stage. But can you tell us a little bit about y your early days, you know, and, and uh, what was the making of Tams O'Doyle? Well, I was brought up in the car, so I'm literally born and bred in racehorse territory. Um, Mum and Dad trained when I was a kid, so there's literally, I was out on the gallops, that's where I learned everything, where to, how to walk. I was riding probably before I was walking, I had a pony. So I've always been within racing. My grandfather, Jack Toyle, he was a, um, a bloodstock agent, and he very much a big part of my life, and my uncle Peter and my cousin Ross, and. Uh, and are all involved in the, in the Doyle bloodstock business yeah. as well. So I suppose I've been dragged up and steeped in it. So uh, mum trained on for years. Um, my dad died when I was about nine. Yeah. And um, so she, she took over the business and we had ponies. And she, she was very, whilst we lived and breathed racing, which I went racing all the time, went with her. Mum always felt that actually it was a better education going racing and hunting <laughs> than it was actually always going to, <laughs> often going to school. But um, she wanted us to give us a good rounded uh, start. So very much we played violin. Being well read was very important to her art. She was an artist and a poet. She was quite an eccentric lady. She um, loved fashion as well. So I suppose I was brought up with lots of interest. So whilst I was, racing was, you know, foremost and and the bread and butter, it was very much a, a more rounded uh, upbringing. And I mean, in terms of your race, and you, 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 I mean, you mentioned the training and the bloodstock. So I mean, you had. Uh, that, that grounding, you had a lot of it covered from all the angles, which would have helped you like uh, much down the line. Absolutely. And when I, I went, um, obviously, all the way through school, and when I went to UCD, I studied history of art and archaeology, would you believe? Which was um, really helpful for your job at HRI. Helpful, yeah. Yes, but my history of art, I've definitely kept up in my interest there. Um, but I did a master's in public relations then, and that's what really set me up. But all the way through college, I worked um, part time, especially doing spotting at Goffs. I was the first lady spotter in Goffs sales. Right. So again, that was almost second home for me, golf, since I was a little thing. Right. So um, yeah, so I, I've seen all aspects, you know, from breeding, the sales business, the racing. You know, racing to me is like a big family for me, really, in all aspects of it. I suppose I know everyone from all the stable staff all the way up through to the top owners, and it's great to be able to, to relate to everybody. So you went and you did the history of art. I mean, were you planning on working in racing? Um, I had planned on working always on the industry side of racing, so I had seen, I mean, I see how hard it is um, to be a trainer and a breeder. It's, it's a very, very tough life. Um, you know, horses don't, you know, go in the cupboard for Christmas Day and, and holidays and hangover days. You know, they need to be looked after 365 yeah. days a year and, again, trying to get bills paid. It's, it's a very tough industry and there's wonderful high days and, you know, and then there's tougher days. So I always saw from both sides and I very much wanted to get into the business side of the industry and try and make um, some sort of impact from the business side so literally that was what it was what I set out to do especially when I did my uh, master's in public relations yes yes and then um, I worked in slattery communications for mm. a year and I worked on all sorts of clients from Esso to Hennessy, Moet, Dom Perignon I worked for um, Toyota Lexus so a really good grounding yeah. there and the next thing there was a, an article in the newspaper in the Sunday Independent um, for a PR manager PR promotions manager for horse racing Ireland so my phone started ringing off the hook that morning. All my friends were reading it. This is your this job. Is your job. Like, yeah. You got it quickly. Yeah. Make sure, get your application in. So um, I went and I had my interview with Michael O'Rourke. And um, I think it went on for uh, over an hour anyway. And we got on like a house on fire. And obviously I was brimming with ideas. <laughs> and uh, 
trying to prove that I could do the job and, and luckily I got the job. I think knowing everybody and the industry and having credibility really did help because when you pick up the phone and you're ringing people, you know, people are already saying yes or they're taking your calls and, and I had a good bit of, um, a lot of media contacts too, yeah. so I literally utilised those straight away, but our, um, we had an excellent um, plan in 2002 and we were very much attracting the younger um, generation racing, very much yeah. the 20 to 29 year olds and that was very much because they were pre-married, had disposable income, you know, pre-making their life decisions I suppose as to what, what plans and yeah. what sports and hobbies they were going to take. So we really targeted that and at 22 I was in that target market so I felt I knew what, I, what they were looking for. And were you involved in devising that target market or was this sort of the mandate that you were given uh, Michael go get these people? Yeah, well, Mark, Michael O'Rourke had developed up an excellent marketing plan just as uh, literally uh, as I was arriving in so he knew exactly what he wanted and when I arrived so literally we were able to get stuck straight into a TV ad campaign he felt we needed to have the horse racing brand up there with the likes of your Lever Brothers and Coca-Cola yeah. and horse racing being such a successful sport and so much a part of our culture that people needed to be more exposed to it and um, so we you very much we, yeah and, and then and then Hector came along yeah so that was the, the second ad campaign was right. Hector but Hector came onto my radar literally um, I got a couple of emails mentioning Hector Hochgon and I didn't know who he was, right. and my Irish is pretty terrible. And I was thinking, God, I just, maybe he only speaks Irish, yeah. I won't be able to. But it was because he was making this Only Fools by Horses program. Yeah, yeah. So he came in and he met me in the office, and it was at the time of Panorama and a few other not so nice um, programs yeah. about racing. So yes. I was a little bit skeptical, and I wanted to know exactly all about it before we got involved. Once I realised what it was about, you know, we, we helped them as much yeah. as we could, and it was an excellent show with Pat Flynn and Sean Cleary yeah. and yeah, it was it really and it took off um, and I suppose Hector's genuine interest and passion in racing was so evident at that stage. And then when we were looking for our next campaign, he just seemed to be the right person. His career took off and, yeah. and our ads took off. And did they have an immediate impact, did you feel? Yeah, the, uh, we went to a record attendances of 1.3 million over, over those um, few years. Um, so now, albeit that was a lot of Celtic Tiger and yeah. people going racing, but definitely the level of interest and the interest in those ad campaigns were huge from all our research and work that we did about them. And I think he was so legitimate, he was so real, you know, he also broke down the barriers, you know, he had scruffy hair and an earring and he didn't always wear, um, he didn't always wear, you <laughs> know, you to say. <laughs> <laughs> dire folks, he often wears an earring, so it's gone now, it's all good. Um, and, you know, and he was just a bit, you know, scruffy and, and just loved, genuinely loved it, you know, and he knew more about form and racing and betting, you know, than, than so many people. So he, I think he, he did he did an awful lot for the sport and he's still doing still it. Still doing it, I yeah. mean. I mean, you mentioned only fools buy horses, but at some stage you decided that it was a good idea to get involved in making programmes yourselves. I mean, how did that come about? Yeah, well, quite, quite soon after, we, we obviously TV is, is crucial and it's one way of getting the message out. And I'm, as a communicator and a PR, you know, TV is so crucial. So we worked with TV3 and we um, devised Go Racing, which ran for three seasons that Brian Gleeson yeah. presented. And that, um, that, went, that went really well. It was, it, yeah, it was sort of 14 week series at, e at each time. And um, really good, great insights behind the scenes. And there had been nothing like it. I mean, it's, a, it's amazing for such a huge sport and industry within the country. There had been nothing like it. No, absolutely. So it was great to sort of get out there and get that. And it went really well. Mm -hmm. And then there were, um, we worked on In the Blood, which was a um, historical DVD about right. Irish racing. Yeah. That again was, went really well. It got you know, huge viewerships on RTE. It's also a DVD that was sold afterwards. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's been lots of TV programs, including, um, did, did you see The Horses with Paul Nolan? With Paul Nolan, yeah, that was cracking. Yeah, 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 yeah so yeah, it was really yeah. raw, yeah. edgy insight. And it was, um, I met with Liz Merriman of Little Bird Films, and she had this idea for really following horses and it was very much more about the horse as opposed yeah. to necessarily the people and um, but it was the relationships together and so we met and I thought that Paul Nolan was definitely the person to yeah. do it so he's such a character such a character I have to give Paul that he never said no to me and this is what he did after three almost three years of filming this he said oh my I've never said no to you times but I'm genius I can't believe you know <laughs> and he never thought it would make you know then it was going to all the film festivals and it was he was a huge film huge. and it ended up you know on primetime yeah. TV as well and what happened then is that people saw the characters that are within racing and you know you had like TG Carr for argument's sake taking it on themselves at Jockey Yella and, and my favourite which is Jump Boys and mm. who will ever forget that shower scene which was the, one of the scariest things ever but it was, it was brilliant television, I mean the, the insight. 
I think the inside, I mean, people love to see behind the scenes, but it's also how much it matters. Like it matters so much, you know, to people. It matters so much to the stable staff, to the trainers, you know, all the ancillary it matters to the breeders. You probably don't see so much the breeder side of things, but if they breed a horse that goes on to win a, a Gold Cup or a Champion Hurdle or a or an Ascot Gold Cup, yeah. you know, it means the world to them. And obviously it's bloodlines, breeding, that affects the sales, it affects, you know, new owners coming into the business. So uh, from my point of view, I suppose I just see all the parts of the jigsaw that fit together and it's, um, you know, it's so important, every, every bit is so necessary. And then the race course experience is there because yeah. the owners need to have a good time when they go racing as well. So it is, it's one big sort of jigsaw that needs to be slotted together and it matters so much yeah. to everybody. Earlier we were just talking and you mentioned that one of the things you were proudest of was the sort of publications and the education in terms of, of you know, demystifying, I guess, racing. Uh, I mean, tell us a little bit about that and, and why it means so much. Yeah, well, I suppose you, you need to break down the barriers in racing. We can often be use too many buzzwords ourselves and we all know what we're talking about, yeah. but the wider public maybe find it a little bit intimidating. So I think it's important that we, you know, break things down and explain it well. So we've brought out over the years lots of beginner's guides. I worked with Ella McSweeney on a beginner's guide to racing. It's a, a, an online series of videos and it's also a DVD. So if anyone wants to know a little bit more about racing or you're going with a bunch of friends and you don't want, you know, you feel you want to be up to speed, you know, on how to read a race card or what to look out for. So I really love doing all of those. Um, also worked all the print and publications, the yeah. fixture list, you know, made them all bright and colourful and yeah. guides to Irish racing. So many fact books, annual reports, you name it, but everything is bright and young and funked yeah. up. So yeah, no, I'm really proud of all that, I must say. I mean, I'd have thought the one I'd have picked out is that probably you could have probably left after a year because what happened in, in that first year, your legacy was assured in terms of the inception and obviously the subsequent development of the HRI Awards, which are now Horse Racing's Awards, but one of the greatest, uh, most important sporting awards uh, in, in annually. I mean, how did you go about that? Um, and and you must be very proud of it. Yeah, I really am. I mean, the awards are, are a big part. The ten, we've celebrated our 10th year this year. So yeah, 2003 was the first award. So it was on a much smaller scale in 2003. And then it has grown and grown and grown. I remember Barry Garrity won and Padge Berry, Dermot Weld won one of the first, the first HRI awards in 2003. And we used to hold it in the Western Hotel. But I suppose it's about celebrating your heroes and from what I did in communications PR it was very much about telling racing story and you tell it through the people who are best at best in yeah. class really. Yeah. And so to celebrate, you know, the likes of Barry Garrity that year he had won um well he had I think he was the leading rider in Cheltenham sure. plus he had the Moscow Flyer days and um, it was really special. So literally every year to just recount and relive all those special moments. And they really have, like you say, they've grown and grown. And not only are they the top racing awards in Ireland, but they are one of the top sporting awards. So yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. And I'm sure they hopefully they will continue for many years to come. And you mentioned, obviously, some of the great days. I mean, in the middle of that decade there, we just owned particularly the National Hunt uh, Sphere, Aintree, the Grand National, Cheltenham Champion Hurdles. Mm. And there were so many days, I mean, I, I mentioned to you Paddy Mullins winning the Oaks in 2003, Vintage Tipple. There were a lot of them there. I mean, in terms of racing, what do you recall? What, what, what floated your boat? I suppose those Chel Cheltenham and Aintree years were yeah. really special. Um, and the years of Kicking King, Moscow Flyer, Hardy Eustace. Um, then Aintree, you know, the Hedge, Hedge Hunter, um, Monty's Pass, Silver Birch. You know, they're all, you know, I suppose... I and they're all stories. Uh, all wonderful stories and small stories like Monty's Pass, you know, Jimmy Mangan and Connor. So um, that was one, one of the first homecomings I did. So I was there, you know, for that, <laughs> hugging Jimmy after. It was high excitement. We had a great time. Barry Garrity, great celebrations. But at the same time, I was thinking, right, the Kerr is tomorrow. When is the horse travelling right. back? Let's get the horse to the Kerr. But of course, Connor is in Cork and trying to arrange all the logistics. So literally, we turned it around in the, in the less than 24 hours, had Monty's pass, arranged flags, ringing home, getting people, or, and my colleague Barbara, she was organising flags and we were, you know, trying to get it out to the national media. Yeah. So it was on 6-1 News and everywhere. So literally, we got all the news stations down, we got photographs and all the papers. So it was for, again, trying to drive more people to the yeah. Curragh the next day and also celebrating 
what a great story it was. But again, a small a small yard in Connor and for such, such a massive achievement to, to win one of the biggest races in Ireland. You're in on that, you know, you get, you know, you really feed off that excitement and buzz, and you was really able to celebrate with them all, you know, all those different years. You know, Hedge Hunter and Willie Mullins winning number six Valverde for Martin, Martin Brazel, and then Hedge Hunter was second. I remember being in the yard with them all afterwards and seeing if Hedge Hunter was okay. But you're really part of it all, yeah. you know. So I must say it was really fabulous. Kicking King was was absolutely awesome, winning for the Tafts as well, and we're great friends with the Harringtons and Moscow Flyer. You know, just you were there for it all. I must say, I really love such great memories. You haven't mentioned riding in the charity race in Punchestown. No, that was a good buzz, all right. I was only ninth though, so yeah. But I had a great time. Rode Tooten Common for. Yeah. Um, Art the more in the kidney um, charity race. I mean, we've only touched on a small percentage of everything you've done. Is there anything you'd love to have had done that you didn't maybe get to do or didn't get to finish? Or that's a hard question. I, I don't think so. I mean, I really enjoyed our ambassador campaigns. Yeah. We had our fashion ambassadors and the flash ambassador, National Hunt, Davy Russell, Barry Garrity. Catherine Thomas, Caroline Morhan. I think that, you know, we are a very celebrity driven society and I think music, celebrity, good food, mm -hmm. you know, I helped bring that the um, Good Food uh, Ireland the Festival fresh, to the yeah. Curra and that's worked out really well. You know, we'd love to see more of those type of events. And um, This is the year of the gathering. Mm -hmm. There's going to be big gathering events at a lot of the courses, especially culminating in Leopardstown on the 29th of December. So I suppose I won't get to be involved yeah. in that and I've been been involved all the way along. So there's plenty of things. Well, I mean, you'll be able to go on a social capacity well, now. Well, there you go, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's time. It's good to have a change, and I'm. But the thing is, I'm still as passionate as I ever was about changing. You know, improving racing yeah. and working within racing, and 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 beyond. But yeah, so that hasn't changed. And and just before we move on, I am interested in because some of the sports personalities you mentioned that personalities, some of the actual racing personalities are the greatest there have ever been in the world in in, in both spheres. What is it like to be in amongst them and to be, you know, close to them? I mean. Yes. They really are, I suppose, huge sports stars, um, the likes of Johnny Murta, Aidan O'Brien, Dermot Weld, Ruby Walsh. Absolutely, I suppose they're, they've all become good friends as well as colleagues over the years. I was um, over the Melbourne Cup with Dermot Weld. We uh, organised a great press conference, sort of last minute, ended up getting huge Australian and world media at it um, yeah. with John O'Donoghue back was in the day. Was that a bit of a, oh my God? <laughs> yeah, well, it, yeah, it's just it something I decided I'd see if I could pull it off and, yeah. I, and it happened, you know, and it worked, it worked out brilliantly, it was, so it was great publicity for Irish racing. Um, John Murta, excellent, world, world, just a world-class athlete, really, and also wonderful media-friendly person too, which has been great. We just lately did the Air to the Ground piece with him. So yeah, working with all these people, I suppose you're working with the best in class. You know, they're intelligent, astute, interesting people. So yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I mean, seeing Joseph O'Brien when I started, I think he must have been about eight or nine. Yeah. And so now to see him, Champions. you know, as champion jockey and to be there and very much celebrating the championships as part of what I do. Yeah. So I must, I really, really enjoyed that and wish them all every success. Yeah. Obviously, now we're moving on to a, a new a new chapter, and I mean, um, I, I was thinking about it again, and, and uh, I was thinking about your your mom because she did so many different things, and she was clearly an individual. And, and I was wondering that, you know, when she passed away there a couple of years ago, was that by any chance a, a start of you thinking? maybe it's time for me to go because she she liked the challenge didn't she she did i suppose so i suppose we myself and my sister bella we both are probably um always up for different challenges right. and pushing ourselves forward and to to the next project and the next project yeah. Mum had said to me over the years, you know, you work so hard for us, you know, you're so involved, why wouldn't you do that, you know, maybe for yourself a little yeah. bit? And so I always, you know, I never looked beyond because I just was so um, in, into what I was doing in HRI and, you know, I obviously believed in, in, in what we were trying to yeah. achieve and increasing racecourse tenants is an interest. So, but then, and, I, and whilst I still believe in that, um, I think, you know, to do it for yourself a little bit and also have a two-year-old daughter, India, and just to be a little bit more flexible, you know, yeah. trying to strive for this work-life balance that everybody talks about, whether it's <laughs> achievable or not. So I just thought maybe it's a good opportunity. Maybe the green shoots are out there. Even though we are still very much in a recession, the one thing people absolutely do need is someone to promote their business. And, you know, there is no value in an untold story. So that's something I do very well. And also, I suppose, to be able to explore my other interests, maybe to explore the fashion and art side of things as well, yeah. maybe equestrian as well as horse racing. So just gives me a slightly broader scope and 
I'll be able to take on a wide variety of projects. But I mean, you're you're renowned, like uh, I mean, within racing and fashion, and I mean, you must have untold contacts. I mean, I, I would imagine that phone will be ringing a long while. Oh, well, it's been it's been great. I put something up on Facebook the other day, and I just couldn't believe the amount of goodwill and, and comments out there. And I suppose then, like you say, the emails and the phone calls have been coming in. So hopefully, there'll be plenty of work out there for me. Um, you know, I'm up for the challenge now and yeah it's good for a change uh, and obviously there is the stud as well um, you know uh, tell us a little bit about that will, will you will you be involved are you are involved aren't you yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we've been in Broda stud for three years now and we've been running it as um, you know we, we take on a lot of um, of borders and mares and foals and um, we also have Broda and Cobblestown consigning so we can sign yearlings for the um, for the top yearling sales so it's quite a boutique uh, uh, um, you know high-end stud and we're, we're been working to grow that over the over the last few years and it's been going well so I need to put a bit more time into that we're also involved in a um, my husband's involved in a yeah. social network yeah an audio session social network called boast and it's um it's quite new it's so what's an audio social network yeah <laughs> you can download it to your iPhone go onto the iTunes store and, and the app store and you can download it there you can leave voice 20 sec 22 seconds sort of voice messages type thing it's quite celebrity driven so the likes right. of Brezzy being on it okay. and he would um Dave from 98 FM and they're going on leaving messages about gigs they're going to or events or Q&A with different people so that'll probably grow through sports through music universal music are on it as well now so just to give that a little bit of time but that you know that's that's Dave's project and there's a, the developers are there and they're working on that but it'd be nice to give them a little bit of support as well. So you're going to concentrate on the PR and events side? PR and events and the social networking side as well from you know trying to get comp help companies grow that side of their business because you know this is an incredible era for online marketing and getting your message out there you know via the likes of setting up business pages on Facebook and using Twitter and maybe a lot of companies aren't utilizing it to its full capacity so I hope to be able to, to help companies with that as well. So you're reflecting on uh, a, a fantastic 11 years end of a chapter must be very excited about what is likely to be a very busy and uh, hopefully lucrative next chapter. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I look back with my 11 years in Horse Racing Ireland with a lot of pride and a lot of enjoyment. You know, lots of great projects. My colleagues, have wonderful colleagues over the year from Brian Kavanagh, Michael O'Rourke, Barbara White, um, and just so many different people that I work with and with Irish Servant Marketing, the Tote. So yeah, and I've, I've had great years and it's just, it's good. Looking forward to a new chapter now and new challenges ahead, so. Okay, that's it. Th thanks, thanks very much, Tamso. Thanks, Darren. And just on behalf of uh, all the Irish racing media, the wider media, and everyone here on Irish Horse TV, I'd like to thank Tamso uh, for everything she has done in the past 11 years.